Hi, I'm Dr. Ed Martin for Ivy Family Health Updates. I'm joined by my sister, Dr. Catherine Martin, my brother, Dr. John Martin. I was going to spend a few minutes on the topic of methicillin resistant staph aureus, or MRSA, which has certainly been uh, in the press a lot lately. Um, I mean, it certainly is a very serious uh, problem, particularly for our hospitalized patients. In fact, in, in 2005, there were more deaths in the country from this organism, methicillin resistant staph, MRSA, than from AIDS. So it, it really has developed into a, a major issue in our hospitals. Now, the deaths that have typically occurred in the hospital are usually on very seriously ill patients, patients with underlying illness, uh, patients who've had major surgery, um, and typically the, the wounds that uh, they develop in might be post-operative wounds, um, bed sores in a patient who's broken down, uh, might be in a catheter, and some seriously ill patients can even develop pneumonia from this particular infection. The, uh, it is staph aureus, the, the, the organism has been around for a long time, but over the years as we've used antibiotics uh, you know, in the community and in the hospitals for infections, Gradually, some of the staff have developed a resistance to the most commonly used antibiotics, uh, and these then are more difficult to treat and require generally certain antibiotics uh, that uh, they're used to treat uh, this infection. And there's been a lot of concern about this infection in the community, in particular schools. It's been in locker rooms. I've heard uh, certainly a lot of reports about this infection being passed uh, between athletes. Yeah. Well, and that's true, and in fact, some deaths have been reported in the country. Although typically, uh, in, in the community setting, it does tend to be a less serious infection. Uh, you don't see pneumonias, for example, but you may see skin infections. You may see a boil, for example, uh, that then won't respond to the usual treatment. Uh, if it's drained, it requires more than drainage, for example, it requires an antibiotic. It may not respond to the usual uh, antibiotics we would use for this. And so then you, you, we can, can run into problems, and they say, you know, there have been some deaths reported in the country. Now, you know, as a surgeon, certainly, it's a concern of mine, and I know that in the hospital setting, there's a much higher chance of people getting a MRSA infection post-op. But I do most of my things, either in an outpatient center or in the office, but should I be doing nasal swabs on people to figure out who's a carrier, and if they are a carrier, do you treat the carrier? Or, well, certainly nowadays, most hospitals, everybody who comes through the door and is admitted is, is uh, examined to see if they have. They take the culture from, they swab the nose to see if they have this. Now, the fact that it's in the nose, that doesn't mean they have infection. It doesn't mean we need to be admitted to the hospital, have to be put on intravenous antibiotics. Uh, but generally, we will do something to try and eliminate uh, the, the MRSA carriage, to eliminate it from the nose. That might be something like uh, antibiotic ointments in the nose, special soaps. Uh, and certainly while they're in the hospital, we try and keep them away from other patients. And certainly if you go in the hospitals nowadays, from room to room, you'll often see a sign outside. It'll say contact precautions. And you'll see that everyone going into the room is putting on a gown and gloves. And they're putting on the gown and gloves not to protect the patient. They're doing it to protect other patients so that they don't then transfer the, uh, uh, the bacteria to another patient. You think this is a just a preview of things to come with antibiotic-resistant bacteria? Well, it's certainly not the first uh, antibiotic-resistant organism, and I think part of it is, is we're just more aware now and trying to take appropriate precautions. Um, the, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we routinely test now. Uh, we, we are very careful um, you know, once somebody has this to try and protect it from being transmitted to other patients. Because for some people, you know, it's in their nose and they may never have any issues with it, but if for some reason it goes to the person in the next room who's a dialysis patient and has just had a catheter placed uh, into, the, into their uh, blood vessels, or if it gets to a, a severely compromised individual, those are the patients who it, it can really die from it. Now, the, in fact, about uh, of the people who get it and actually get a serious infection, about 5% of those patients will die. Now that means 95% recover, but still 5% to die from an infection nowadays with all of our antibiotics, that's still a significant number. And do you have to use an IV antibiotic to treat this, or are there you know, medicines you can take by mouth to treat it? Or? Well, generally if somebody has a serious infection, they're gonna be treated with an IV antibiotic. Okay. So, uh, the, uh, again, with the colonization, if you have it in your nose, that's usually just treated with something topical. But, okay. but in, the, in the community, in, I mean, our, our, and in the hospital as well, our main focus is on prevention. In the hospital, we try and prevent its spread. And in the community as well, and we can do simple things, like when I go to the gym now and I pull out a mat in an exercise class, I'll wipe it down. I think that's a very good practice. Um, and you want to make sure, I mean, hand washing. I mean, I think we talk about that all the time now in, in healthcare settings. 
Um, but even, uh, I think even in patients you can do something if for some reason you are in the hospital. I think it's, it's very reasonable to expect that as you see people come into your room that they're washing their hands. And oftentimes that's with the alcohol um, dispense the gel at the, uh, uh, at the door of the, of the room. Uh, it's important that you see everybody who comes in your room that they put some gel on their hands and rub that in. And that is very effective at eliminating any of the staff that might be on that person's fingers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.